My name is Melissa Dreskis and I'm a board certified behavior analyst. Today I'm going to show you how to make a data sheet part three. In this video we'll be focusing on behavior data. I'll show you how to create a data sheet to use partial interval recording and record ABC data. Whenever I have a data sheet for behavior I like to include the definitions in it. So let's say that we have five behaviors that we're tracking. We're going to add a table with five columns. Actually, we're going to add it down here. Five columns and three rows. Up at the top here, we're going to label our behaviors. So let's say we're tracking aggression, disruption, pica, self-injurious behavior, and non-compliance. I know that non-compliance is not really a behavior, but it is still something that is very helpful to track. Now down here, I'm going to do the definitions. So aggression could be any time client hits, kicks, pinches, scratches, or pulls hair of another person. And then down here, I'm going to make that italicized. And this is going to be how we score it. So score per instance. So for every hit, that's how you're going to score it. That's how we are going to score all of these, except for non-compliance, which would be score total time. Now that we have the definitions in there, let's add a spot to track our behaviors. So there's a few ways that you can track behaviors. Uh, let's first add a table to just tally them. So again, we're going to add a table. We're going to make it six by two to start off with. We want the date. And then here is where we will have our behaviors. So same thing that I did whenever I was doing the skills programs. We're going to split the cells. Under number of columns, you're going to put one, and for number of rows, you want two. And first behavior is going to be aggression. And then underneath how we're actually going to calculate this data and make it smaller and rate per hour. So how many times did the client hit per hour? And now let's just copy this down for the rest of our behaviors. So there's two, three, four, and five. Changes to disruption. Pica self-injurious behavior, and if I can type that in there, non-compliance. So you're going to want more room for non-compliance because the therapist should be writing down the times. And to score this, I would score it minutes per hour. So this is helpful for tallying data across days, but if you have a behavior or multiple behaviors that are happening in a high frequency and are going to be difficult to actually tally throughout the session, then you might want to create a data sheet for partial interval recording. So let's do that one now. I'm just going to delete that. And we're going to insert a table 
I'm going to just insert the biggest table that I can because really I need it to go across 13 cells, but the max that it's going to let me do is 10. So if we're doing partial interval recording, I need to say what my intervals are going to be. So let's say they're going to be five minute intervals. So that would be zero to five minutes, five to 10, 10 to 15, and across all the way to the end here. Now when we get to here, I don't have any more. So I'm going to want to insert a column. So I'm right clicking, going to insert, and selecting insert column to the right. So there is another column for 45 to 50. Um, you can also go to layout and select this, insert right, and another one. So now we have 50 to 55 and 55 to 60. I do not want it to be taking two rows, so I'm going to change the font size to eight. Now it will fit. And then here, you can leave these blank, or if the client's always seen at the same time each day, you can write the hours in here. So three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and six o'clock. If the client's seen from 3.30 to 6.30 every day, then you can even gray these out. So select these cells where the client is not seen, and then you want to select this right here, which will fill those, and then just select a gray color. I generally will leave these blank and then just tell the therapist to draw a line or indicate somehow what the time of their session was. Um, again, for, for this type of data, we're not going to be able to actually write aggression, disruption, and all of these blocks. So I'm going to give these abbreviations. So now as the therapist is there, they can just see, did any of these behaviors occur within this five minute interval? So if aggression and pica occurred here, they would just write A and P. Then if there was nothing till here and then there was non-compliance, they could write that um, and so forth. And then just fill this up with the abbreviations. And that's a lot easier way of tracking high frequency behaviors. Now for non-compliance, you'll still want the total times. So right below this, you can write non-compliance. And then I'm hitting the shift and the dash, which is right next to the zero, and making a line. And I'll just copy that a few times. And now the therapist has a bunch of lines that they can write the non-compliance times on. And then you just want to, again, copy this. So you have five copies of it. And you can adjust the spacing to get this all on one data sheet. Now you have the definitions and your interval recording for your behavior for five days. So you can also use this to collect ABC data. So let's delete these intervals. Whenever I'm collecting ABC data, I will insert a table. I like to have a column for the date the time, the antecedent, the behavior, the consequence, and then a spot for notes as well. So this will be date, time, antecedent, behaviors, consequence, and notes. 
So under behaviors, you can just leave it blank and they can write the behaviors that happened. Or if you know the behaviors that you're looking at, you can split this into five columns. So I'm here by behaviors. I'm going to hit split cells and select five columns and one row. You can use those same abbreviations. But first I'm going to make it smaller. So they can just use each box to track those behaviors because there could be one antecedent and then multiple behaviors happened. And then same thing for consequence. If you are just tracking the four functions of behavior, you can split the cell into four columns. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this here. Just make it smaller again. If you want, you can change the text direction and you can actually write out attention, tangible, escape, or sensory. Um, I don't really like doing that, so I'm going to just leave it how it was, and I'm just going to write the abbreviations in there. So A is for attention, and then T for tangible, escape, and sensory. And then a column for the notes. So now we're going to merge these. So this whole, these whole two rows here, we're going to be the header. So layout, merge cells. I'm going to merge all of these. And then just to make it look better, we'll highlight that, and I want them centered and in the middle. And now everything below this is where you can put the data in. But now look at how small our notes section is and how large the date and the time sections are, and we don't need them to be that big. So we can just move them over. We don't need the antecedent to be that big. And then something, you'll see what happens here. So look as I start moving this one over. It's moving over this top one, and it got away from where it actually was. So we need to actually move every line over. And don't worry about the spacing of these because we will fix this in just a second. I'll show you how to do that. So just move them all over so you have enough room to make your notes section as big as you'd like. There we go. All right, so now we have this and it's not looking very pretty. So what we're going to do is we highlight all of these and the trouble there is you have to make sure that you are right here in this upper corner and then go down so you get this first row here then you highlight those cells and we go to layout and we want to distribute the columns evenly and now it's made all the columns the same width. Same thing here. Select, go down, then go over, and distribute the columns evenly. And now it looks nice and even across all of them. And you can just keep on hitting the tab key to make the section bigger. If you want more definition between these, because it's just a bunch of boxes right here, you can uh, change the border. So let's select a border thickness of one and see how I have border painter selected. You can just draw a line 
the changes. That one didn't work. Here we go. So you can just make these borders thicker to have better definition between them. So that is how you make several different forms of behavior data sheets on Word. Um, if you have any questions or special requests, please put it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you for watching my video and don't forget to visit my website at www.abcbehaviortx.com. Here you will find resources and templates from this and other videos, my ABA blog covering a wide range of topics for therapists and parents, and information on my other services such as distance supervision and parent coaching.